Does yellow fever still exist? Yellow fever, an acute infectious disease, does still exist in some select areas of the world. Outbreaks still occur in jungle areas. The disease was once widespread. Afflicting people in tropical climates such as Central and South America, Africa, and Asia. But with exploration during the 1500s and 1600s, and the opening of trade routes during the 1700s. The disease spread to North America by 1699, when there were epidemics in Charleston, South Carolina, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Three years later, an epidemic broke out in New York City. Yellow fever first materialized in Europe in 1723. An epidemic in Philadelphia in 1793 was determined to have been carried there aboard a ship from the West Indies. Nearly all of the city's people were afflicted by the fever, and more than 4. 000 people died in what has been called the worst health disaster ever to befall an American city. Breakthroughs in controlling yellow fever came in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In 1881 Cuban physician Carlos Finlay, 1833-1915, wrote a paper suggesting that yellow fever was transmitted by mosquitoes. This was proved to be true by U.S. Army surgeon Walter Reed, 1851-1902. Who in 1900 headed a commission sent to Cuba to investigate the cause and mode of transmission of yellow fever. With this knowledge, U.S. Army officer and physician William Gorgas, 1854 to 1920, applied strict measures to destroy mosquitoes in Havana, eventually eliminating yellow fever from the Cuban port city. Serving as Chief Sanitary Officer of the Panama Canal Commission from 1904 to 1913, Gorgas implemented similar measures in the Panama Canal Zone, where the disease had been a menace. Again his methods proved effective, greatly reducing the instances of yellow fever, which allowed the canal to be completed. In 1937 the 17D vaccine was developed by American physician and bacteriologist Max Thyler, 1899-1972. The vaccine was found to be effective in combating yellow fever. In 1951 Thyler was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discoveries concerning the infectious disease. Conquering yellow fever was one of the great achievements of modern medicine. Does yellow fever still exist? Yellow fever, an acute infectious disease, does still exist in some select areas of the world. Outbreaks still occur in jungle areas. The disease was once widespread. Afflicting people in tropical climates such as Central and South America, Africa, and Asia. But with exploration during the 1500s and 1600s, and the opening of trade routes during the 1700s. The disease spread to North America by 1699, when there were epidemics in Charleston, South Carolina, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Three years later, 
an epidemic broke out in New York City. Yellow fever first materialized in Europe in 1723. An epidemic in Philadelphia in 1793 was determined to have been carried there aboard a ship from the West Indies. Nearly all of the city's people were afflicted by the fever, and more than four. Zero 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 people died in what has been called the worst health disaster ever to befall an American city. Breakthroughs in controlling yellow fever came in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In 1881 Cuban physician Carlos Finlay, 1833-1915, wrote a paper suggesting that yellow fever was transmitted by mosquitoes. This was proved to be true by U.S. Army Surgeon Walter Reed, 1851-1902. Who in 1900 headed a commission sent to Cuba to investigate the cause and mode of transmission of yellow fever. With this knowledge, U.S. Army officer and physician William Gorgas, 1854 to 1920, applied strict measures to destroy mosquitoes in Havana, eventually eliminating yellow fever from the Cuban port city. Serving as Chief Sanitary Officer of the Panama Canal Commission from 1904 to 1913, Gorgas implemented similar measures in the Panama Canal Zone, where the disease had been a menace. Again his methods proved effective, greatly reducing the instances of yellow fever, which allowed the canal to be completed. In 1937 the 17D vaccine was developed by American physician and bacteriologist Max Thyler, 1899-1972. The vaccine was found to be effective in combating yellow fever. In 1951 Thyler was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discoveries concerning the infectious disease. Conquering yellow fever was one of the great achievements of modern medicine. What is the Hippocratic Oath? The Hippocratic Oath is the pledge taken by many medical students upon graduation or upon entering into practice. While the text of the oath varies by translation, one important line reads, I will prescribe regiment for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgment and never to harm anyone. The vows are attributed to the Greek physician and teacher Hippocrates. C 460 C 377 BC, who practiced on the island of Kos. Unlike his predecessors, who relied on superstitious practices in their treatment of patients. Hippocrates believed that diseases were brought on not by supernatural causes but by natural ones. He further believed that disease could be studied and cured, this assertion forms the basis of modern medicine. Which is why Hippocrates is called the father of medicine. It is largely owing to another prominent Greek physician that the oath was handed down through history. Galen, AD 129 C 199, was physician to Roman emperors Marcus Aurelius. 121 to 80, from 161 and Lucius Commodus, 161 to 92, from 168. He demonstrated that arteries carry blood, not air. As had been thought, and, 
like Hippocrates, Galen believed in the four humors of the body. He left medical texts that for centuries were considered the authoritative works on medical practice. Galen's writings reveal his high regard for Hippocrates, who lived and worked many centuries earlier. Does yellow fever still exist? Yellow fever, an acute infectious disease, does still exist in some select areas of the world. Outbreaks still occur in jungle areas. The disease was once widespread. Afflicting people in tropical climates such as Central and South America, Africa, and Asia. But with exploration during the 1500s and 1600s, and the opening of trade routes during the 1700s. The disease spread to North America by 1699, when there were epidemics in Charleston, South Carolina, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Three years later, an epidemic broke out in New York City. Yellow fever first materialized in Europe in 1723. An epidemic in Philadelphia in 1793 was determined to have been carried there aboard a ship from the West Indies. Nearly all of the city's people were afflicted by the fever, and more than four. Zero 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 people died in what has been called the worst health disaster ever to befall an American city. Breakthroughs in controlling yellow fever came in the late 1800s and early 1900s. In 1881 Cuban physician Carlos Finlay, 1833-1915, wrote a paper suggesting that yellow fever was transmitted by mosquitoes. This was proved to be true by U.S. Army surgeon Walter Reed, 1851-1902. Who in 1900 headed a commission sent to Cuba to investigate the cause and mode of transmission of yellow fever. With this knowledge, U.S. Army officer and physician William Gorgas, 1854 to 1920, applied strict measures to destroy mosquitoes in Havana, eventually eliminating yellow fever from the Cuban port city. Serving as Chief Sanitary Officer of the Panama Canal Commission from 1904 to 1913, Gorgas implemented similar measures in the Panama Canal Zone, where the disease had been a menace. Again his methods proved effective, greatly reducing the instances of yellow fever, which allowed the canal to be completed. In 1937 the 17D vaccine was developed by American physician and bacteriologist Max Thyler, 1899-1972. The vaccine was found to be effective in combating yellow fever. In 1951 Thyler was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discoveries concerning the infectious disease. Conquering yellow fever was one of the great achievements of modern medicine. What was the most damaging earthquake in recent history? It was a July 28, 1976, quake that rocked the Chinese city of Tangshan at 4 o'clock in the morning. In less than a minute, 89% of the homes and 78% of the industrial buildings were destroyed. 
killing 250,000 people, according to the official reports. However, international observers believe the death toll was even higher, about 750,000. Which means that the quake claimed three-fourths of the area's total population. A quake had not occurred in that region in six centuries. And the area was considered to be at low risk for earthquakes. Consequently, the building codes in the region were not stringent. Enough for the structures to withstand the force of the quake. Were there hospitals before the Middle Ages? Public hospitals emerged during the Middle Ages, 500-1350. As Christianity spread and religious orders set up the facilities to serve the poor. Still, most people received a doctor's care in the privacy of their own homes. The concept of a public health care facility originated in India as early as the 3rd century BC when Buddhists established hospital-like installations. The Middle Ages saw the establishment of facilities more closely resembling modern hospital including Paris's Hotel Dieu. Founded in the 7th century, today it is the oldest hospital still in operation. In 970 a hospital in Baghdad, in present-day Iraq. Divided physicians into the equivalent of modern-day interns and externs. Its pharmacy disseminated drugs, as well as spices deemed to have medicinal value from all over the known world. How old is the concept of public health? Public health is an old concept, dating back to when people first began living in communities. Through the ages, governments have shown varying degrees of concern for the public health. The ancients Greeks, and the Romans after them, tried to ensure the health of their citizens. By providing a supply of clean water, via aqueducts and pipelines, managing the disposal of waste. And working to control disease by hiring public physicians to treat the sick. These measures may have helped prevent the spread of certain diseases, but epidemics still occurred. After the fall of the Roman Empire, c. 476, Europe's civilizations largely ignored matters of public health. Once disease was introduced to a community, it would spread quickly. Epidemics of leprosy, the plague, cholera, and yellow fever ensued. During the late 1800s European governments began turning their attention to matters of public health in an effort to control the spread of disease. In the United States, the public health became an official concern when in 1866 a cholera epidemic struck the nation for the 18th consecutive year. It was part of a worldwide epidemic that persisted for 12 years. Though governments set up health facilities, including laboratories for the study of infectious disease. By 1893 another cholera pandemic, widespread epidemic, began. 
During the 20th century, the measures taken by national governments to safeguard their citizens from health risks have been strengthened by the establishment of regional and local laboratories. Public education programs, and the research conducted at universities and other institutions. These combined efforts have made outbreaks of diseases such as diphtheria, dysentery, typhoid fever, and scarlet fever increasingly less common in developed nations. In developing nations, public health officials continue working with international agencies such as the World Health Organization and other United Nations agencies to reduce instances and the spread of infectious disease. How old is biological warfare? Biological or germ warfare has a long history. For example, in the year 1343, Tatars, originally a nomadic tribe of East Central Asia, became sick with the bubonic plague. The disease, which is carried by fleas and rats, was called the Black Death because nearly all who became afflicted died. Invading the Crimea, in present-day Ukraine, the marauding Tatars encountered a group of Genos. Italian, merchants at a trading post. Besieging them, the Tatars catapulted their dead at their enemy. Many of whom became infected, carrying the plague to Constantinople. Present-day Istanbul, Turkey, and to the Western European ports where they traveled. In the 20th century, the use of microorganisms or toxins that produce sickness in people or in animals or that caused destruction to crops, was outlawed by the Geneva Gas Protocol of 1925 In 1972 the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention was simultaneously opened for signature in Moscow, Washington, and London, and the agreement entered into force on March 26, 1975, signed by more than 162 nations. The convention bans the development, production, stockpiling, acquisition, and retention of microbial or other biological agents or toxins in types and in quantities that have no justification for prophylactic, protective, or other peaceful purposes. Nevertheless, Several nations have conducted further research into defense against biological warfare, including developing microorganisms suitable for military retaliation. The existence of such biological weapons including anthrax and smallpox remains a concern today. The possibility that Iraq possessed biological and chemical weapons of mass Destruction was the primary reason for the U.S. led invasion of that country in 2003. Is anthrax a new disease? No, the disease dates back thousands of years at least to biblical times. But its potential use as a bioterrorism weapon is relatively recent. Anthrax is caused by the Bacillus anthracis bacterium, spores that can survive in soil for years. It is mainly a disease of grass-eating livestock. 
but humans who work with herd animals may become infected through exposure. In humans, anthrax occurs as a cutaneous, skin, form, as a pulmonary, inhaled form, or as an intestinal infection after the consumption of contaminated meat. The fifth and sixth plagues on Egypt, as described in Exodus chapters 9, the pestilence and 10, the boils, are consistent with anthrax in livestock and humans. In the late 1800s scientists made several important discoveries regarding anthrax. The anthrax germ, Bacillus anthracis, was the first germ linked to a particular disease. In 1881 French scientist Louis Pasteur developed an inoculation to protect animals from the disease. Anthrax emerged as a potential weapon of bioterrorism during the 20th century. Several countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Japan, Iraq, and the former Soviet Union experimented with the bacterium. Beginning in the 1990s, U.S. troops headed for combat in the Persian Gulf were vaccinated for anthrax. What were the deadliest volcanic eruptions in history? The April 5, 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia was the deadliest yet, killing some 92,000 people. Another Indonesian eruption later in the 19th century this time at Karkato claimed 36,417 lives in late August 1883 on the French island of Martinique in the West Indies. Mount Pili erupted on August 30, 1902, and more than 29,000 people perished. A relatively recent and deadly eruption was that on November 13, 1985, at Nevada del Ruiz. Colombia, it claimed 23,000 lives. Iceland's Skaptur volcano erupted in 1783, while the number of lives lost may not qualify it for inclusion on a short list of deadliest volcanoes. The human toll was great indeed, 20% of the country's population died. Because of population growth, today more people live closer to volcanoes both active and inactive. As a result, the number of volcano-related deaths has increased. Between the years 1600 and 1900, the estimated average death toll per year due to volcanoes was 315. Since the beginning of the 20th century, an average of 845 people have died each year because of volcanic eruptions. What advances were made in medicine during the Middle Ages? During the Middle Ages, 500-1350, medicine became institutionalized. The first public hospitals were opened and the first formal medical schools were established, making healthcare formerly administered only in the home, more widely available and improving the training of doctors. These developments had been brought on by necessity. Europe saw successive waves of epidemics during the Middle Ages. 
outbreaks of leprosy began in the 500s and peaked in the 1200s, the Black Death. The bubonic plague, killed about a quarter of the European population. And smallpox and other diseases afflicted hundreds of thousands of people. Consequently, many hospitals meant to serve the poor were established. As were the first medical schools, some of them associated with universities that were then forming. Such as the University of Bologna, Italy, and the University of Paris, France. In 900 the first medical school was started in Salerno, Italy. European physicians during the period were greatly influenced by the works of Persian physician and philosopher Rezes. Or Reza, C865 C930. Considered the greatest doctor of the Islamic world. Rezes's works accurately describing measles and smallpox were translated into Latin and became seminal references in the Christian world as well. Another prominent Islamic, the scientist Avicenna, or Ibn Sina, 980-1037, produced a philosophical scientific encyclopedia, which included the medical knowledge of the time. In the West, the work became known as Canon of Medicine and with its descriptions of many diseases, including tetanus and meningitis, it remained influential in European medical education for the next 600 years. What is Gray's Anatomy? It is the popular name for anatomy of the human body, descriptive and surgical. Written by English physician Henry Gray, 1825 or 1827 to 1861. First published in 1858, the tome is still considered the standard work on anatomy. And it is in print today in several editions, including the concise Gray's Anatomy. Gray was a lecturer in anatomy at London's St. George's Hospital and was a fellow of Britain's Royal College of Surgeons. He was 33 years old when he compiled the book, which went on to be used by medical students for more than a century. How old is animal experimentation? Scientific experimentation using animals including mice, rats, rabbits, guinea pigs, monkeys, and dogs dates back to ancient times. But the practice did not become widespread until the late 19th century. Clinical experimentation, which includes vivisection, surgery on live animals has yielded benefits to human health. But because it often results in the suffering and death of the animals, many people are against the practice. Tens of millions of animals are used for experimentation in the United States today. Official estimates cite that mice and rats account for some 90% of this number. The practice remains controversial as people grapple with the issues surrounding animal rights and weigh these considerations against improved scientific understanding of illnesses.
When was the first human organ transplant? The first human organ transplant occurred on June 17, 1950, at The Little Company of Mary Hospital in Evergreen Park, Illinois The Suburban Chicago Hospital, better known as the Baby Hospital for the high number of births there each year Was an unlikely place for this landmark in medical history and the doctors who took part in the transplant tried to keep the highly experimental procedure quiet. The subject was a 44-year-old woman who suffered from polycystic kidney disease. She received a donor organ, a kidney, from a cadaver. Making the procedure even more controversial for the Catholic hospital. At the time, the church was opposed to the idea that tissue could be taken from a dead person and put into a living person, and that the tissue would then come to life again. But the three doctors who performed the procedure had the confidence and trust of the sisters running the hospital. Doctors James W. West, Richard H. Lawler, and Raymond P. Murphy were surgeons on the faculty at Loyola Strict School of Medicine and the Cook County Hospital but also practiced at Little Company of Mary. The operation was the last resort for the patient. Who had seen her mother, sister, and uncle die from the same disease. Word leaked about the operation, and several days after the procedure, when the patient was doing well. The hospital and doctors went public with their breakthrough, making headlines around the world. The transplanted kidney functioned in the patient for about six weeks enough time for her other kidney to begin working again. She lived another five years before finally succumbing to the disease. On December 23, 1954, Harvard University physicians led by surgeon Joseph E. Murray, 1919, performed the world's first successful transplant from a living donor. The patient's identical twin brother. The operation took place at Peter Bent Brigham Hospital, now Brigham and Women's Hospital. Since the patient and the donor had the same genetic makeup, organ rejection was not an issue. The procedure saved the patient's life, and the well-publicized breakthrough immediately opened up the possibility for similar transplants, between identical twins, as well as for the transplantation of other organs. Dr. Murray and other Harvard researchers continued working on the problem of rejection. Eventually developing new drugs that reduce the possibility that a recipient would reject an organ from a non-relative. In 1990 Murray was awarded the Nobel Prize for his pioneering work. He shared the prize with his friend and colleague E. Don All Thomas, 1920, an innovator in bone marrow transplant. Today tens of thousands of organs are transplanted each year in the United States. In October 2004 doctors performed the first organ transplant arranged and brokered over the Internet. Who was the first physician in history? The first physician known by name was Imhotep, an Egyptian who lived about 2600 B. 
See also considered a sage, Imhotep lived at a time when the Egyptians were making progress in medicine. The advances included a textbook on the treatment of wounds, broken bones, and even tumors. Imhotep was later worshipped as a god by the Egyptians. What is the strongest earthquake ever measured? It was one that shook Chile on May 22, 1960, it measured 9.5 on the Richter scale. 2,000 died, 3,000 were injured, and 2 million were left homeless. Damage was $550 million. The quake also spawned tsunamis, seismic waves, which claimed 61 lives in Hawaii, 138 in Japan, and 32 dead or missing in the Philippines. What did Silent Spring have to do with the environmental protection movement? The 1962 work by American ecologist Rachel Carson, 1907 to 1964, cautioned the world on the ill effects of chemicals on the environment. Carson argued that pollution and the use of chemicals, particularly pesticides, would result in less diversity of life. The best-selling book had wide influence, raising awareness of environmental issues and launching green. Environmental protection, movements in many industrialized nations. What are the four humors? The four humors are the bodily fluids, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile, originating in the heart, brain, liver, and spleen, respectively. One work assigned to Greek physician Hippocrates, C 460 C 377 BC, Nature of Man, asserts that illness is caused by an imbalance of the four humors, fluids, in the body. The presence of these humors was thought to determine the health and personality of a person. This belief prevailed for centuries but was finally discredited by modern science. During the Middle Ages, 5001350, each of the humors was assigned certain characteristics. Someone of ruddy complexion was believed to have an excessive amount of blood in his or her system. That person would be sanguine, cheerful and optimistic in character. The word sanguine is derived from the Latin word sanguis, meaning blood. Someone who had an imbalance resulting in more phlegm was considered phlegmatic, and would have a slow and impassive temperament. An individual who had excessive yellow bile was considered hot-tempered and a person who had more black bile in his or her physiological system was believed to be melancholic. What was the first scientific textbook on human anatomy? It is a work titled On the Structure of the Human Body, 
written by Belgian physician and professor Andreas V. E. S. Aleus. 1514-1564, and published in 1543, when he was in his late twenties. Like other anatomists during the Renaissance, 1350-1600. V.E.S. Aleus conducted numerous dissections of human cadavers. Publishing his findings and drawings, his textbook soon became the authoritative reference. Overturning the works of Greek physician Galen, 129 c. 199. When was the first heart transplant? The world's first heart transplant took place on December 3, 1967, in Cape Town, South Africa. Surgeon Christian Barnard, 1922-2001, conducted the operation, the patient lived for 18 days. Over the next two years, more than a hundred heart transplant operations were performed. But the survival rate was not encouraging. Surgeons have continued the practice with moderately improved results. While some heart recipients have lived as long as six years after the procedure, only 20% of the recipients survive more than one year. Who invented the X-ray? German physicist Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen 1845 to 1923, discovered X-rays in 1895 but did not understand at first what they were which is how they got their name, in science and math, X refers to an unknown. By the end of the decade, hospitals had put X-rays to use, taking pictures. Called radiographs, of bones and internal organs and tissues to help diagnose illnesses and injuries. Using the new technology, doctors could see the insides of a patient. In 1901 Röntgen received the first Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery of a shortwave ray. How disastrous was the San Francisco earthquake? The quake of 1906 struck at 5.12 a.m. on April 18, and registered 8.3 on the Richter scale. 20 seconds of trembling were followed by 45 to 60 seconds of shocks. The quake cracked water and gas mains, which resulted in a fire that lasted three days and destroyed two-thirds of the city. The destruction and loss of lives were great, as many as 3,000, of San Francisco's 400,000 people were killed, the entire business district was demolished, three out of five homes had either crumbled or burned. 250,000 to 300,000 people were left homeless, and 490 city blocks were destroyed. The quake was a milestone for American journalism, the offices of the city's newspapers. The Examiner owned by William Randolph Hearst, 1863-1951, The Call, and The Chronicle had all burned. But the first day after the disaster, the three papers joined forces across the 
Bay in Oakland to print a combined edition, the California Chronicle Examiner. Across the country, Will Irwin, 1873 to 1948, of the New York Sun. Who had been a reporter and editor at the San Francisco Chronicle from 1900 to 1904, wrote a story titled The City That Was. Which he completed from memory alone. It was picked up by papers around the country and became a classic of journalism. The San Francisco tragedy demonstrated the newfound ability of the American press to create an instant national story out of a local event. The Bay Area was hit again by a sizable quake in 1989. As millions tuned in to watch. The World Series at Candlestick Park outside San Francisco, the TV cameras began to shake. Because of media coverage of the baseball game. The earthquake had literally been broadcast live around the world. Once again, fires resulted from broken gas mains, and the damage was extensive. The so-called Loma Pietra quake registered 7.1 on the Richter scale. Claimed 67 lives, and damaged $15 billion worth of property. San Francisco's Marina District was particularly hard hit at least in part due to the fact that the area was built largely on landfill, including debris from the 1906 quake. The San Francisco earthquake of 1906 remains the worst to ever hit an American city. When was the first test tube baby born? The process of in vitro, artificial, fertilization, IVF, in which doctors retrieve an egg from the mother and mix it with the father's sperm in a petri dish or test tube to achieve fertilization. Made possible the birth of Louise Brown on July 25, 1978, in Bristol, England. She became the world's first test tube baby. The scientific and medical advance of IVF gave parents who were otherwise unable to conceive another chance at procreation. The procedure has since resulted in numerous successful births. Ten years after Louise Brown was born, an infertile couple had a 1 in 10 chance to procreate using IVF technology. And 20 years later the chances had increased to 1 in 5. But as Louise Brown and her parents celebrated her 20th birthday in 1998, News stories abounded discussing the ethics of in vitro fertilization. With scientists now able to clone sheep and mice, public opinion often veered toward fear. Why is stem cell research controversial? Stem cell research raises important bioethical issues. Stem cells have the potential to develop into all body tissues. And they may be able to replace diseased or defective human tissue. The best source for these cell clusters is human embryos. Which are destroyed when the stem cells are extracted. Opponents to the research, including any on the religious right who also oppose abortion, 
argue that the embryo is a potential human life and therefore should not be destroyed for the sake of science. But proponents of the controversial research say that a variety of treatments and cures for diseases could be gained through scientific advancements made because of stem cell research. Supporters add that the embryos cannot develop on their own and therefore should be put to use for the sake of better medicine which could help people who suffer from many different diseases including diabetes, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's, thus improving and extending human life. It is important to note that the embryos exist in laboratories because of advances previously made in reproductive science. In August 2001 the George W. Bush administration moved cautiously forward on the issue by allowing stem cell research as long as it is limited to existing cells, the embryos having already been destroyed. In other words, new stem cells cannot be created strictly for the purpose of laboratory work. Bush said he concluded that federal funding should be used to support research on 60 existing genetically diverse stem cell lines, which have the ability to regenerate themselves indefinitely. The president acknowledged the complexity of the issue, saying in a radio address, at its core. This issue forces us to confront fundamental questions about the beginnings of life and the ends of science. It lies at a difficult moral intersection, juxtaposing the need to protect life in all its phases with the prospect of saving and improving life in all its stages. But, he added, for the existing stem cell lines, the life and death decision has already been made. Over the next few years, state legislatures took up the issue, creating a patchwork of policies across the nation by 2005. When was the first hospital established in North America? It was in 1503 when the Spanish built a hospital in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Then known as Hispaniola. It is no longer in existence, but ruins remain. On the North American mainland, the first hospital was opened in Quebec, Canada. In 1639. The first incorporated hospital in the United States was the Pennsylvania Hospital in Philadelphia. Chartered in 1751 with the support of statesman Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790. What advances were made in medicine during the Renaissance? The chief advance of the Renaissance, 1350 to 1600, was an improved understanding of the human anatomy. This knowledge was the direct result of dissection, which was prohibited during the Middle Ages. 500-1350 The scientific spirit of the Renaissance saw those laws relaxed. And researchers were free to dissect human corpses for study. Among those who practiced dissection was Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519. While the Italian artist may be better known for the Mona Lisa, he also contributed greatly to the understanding of human anatomy. 
producing more than 750 anatomical drawings as a result of his studies in dissection. How did ancient societies interpret catastrophic weather events? Different cultures developed wholly unscientific explanations for dramatic weather events or other. Natural phenomena explanations typically rooted in the existing mythology or folklore of its people. For example, the ancient Maya, in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and in parts of Central America. Believed that earthquakes were the god's way of thinning out an overcrowded population. Indians in central Mexico are believed to have worshipped the grasshopper or locust after swarms destroyed their crops. One Japanese myth maintained that the entire island string rested on the back of a giant catfish who would grow restless and flop around when the gods were displeased, resulting in an earthquake. According to Hawaiian myth, the volcano goddess Pele causes Mount Kilauea to erupt whenever she has a temper tantrum. What is the strongest earthquake recorded in an urban area? T is believed to be a November 1, 1755, earthquake that struck Lisbon, Portugal. The quake may have registered at least 9.0 on the Richter scale and lasted 6 or 7 minutes. The port city was demolished, and more than 60,000 people perished. It was felt as far away as Sweden and generated a giant wave. Tsunami, that struck the West Indies in the Caribbean Ocean. The catastrophe in Lisbon generated an intense debate among European philosophers who tried to explain why God destroyed that particular city. Then the seat of the Holy Inquisition, during High Mass on All Saints' Day. Would scientists soon be able to clone humans? While technological advances continue to be made, government leaders around the world grapple with how to regulate the use of new life-giving technologies such as IVF. When was leprosy first diagnosed? Leprosy is an ages-old disease, described in many historical texts. Mentioned in the Bible, leprosy was introduced in Europe in the 400s BC. Probably by the troops of the Persian ruler Xerxes, c. 519-465 BC, as they moved westward. By the 12th century leprosy had reached epidemic proportions in Western Europe, even claiming the lives of rulers. Portugal's Alfonso II died from it in 1223, and Robert I, King of Scots, in 1329. Explorers and settlers from the European continent later carried the infectious chronic skin disease to the New World, where it was previously unknown. 
the cause of leprosy was unknown. While some theorized it was contagious, others asserted that it was hereditary or was caused by eating certain foods. Even potatoes were at one time blamed for originating the affliction. The disease gradually disappeared from Europe, attributable to improved living conditions. Better nutrition, and, later, the advent of drugs that are effective in treatment. The first clinical description was not made until 1874 when Norwegian physician Gerhard Henrik Hansen 1841-1912, discovered the leprosy bacterium. Since then the disease has also been called Hansen's disease. Today, leprosy afflicts about 5 million people worldwide. It is endemic, native, to tropical or subtropical regions, including Africa. Central and South America, India, and Southeast Asia. Most cases of leprosy that occur in the United States are among immigrants from areas where the disease is endemic. Beginning in the mid-1950s, the Roman Catholic nun Mother Teresa 1910-1997 of Calcutta ministered to those afflicted with leprosy, setting up colonies for their care. When did modern medicine begin? The practices of modern medicine have their roots in the 1600s. It was early in the century when the work of English physician William Harvey, 1578-1657, demonstrated to the science community that effective medicine depends on knowledge of the body's structure. From 1597 to 1602 Harvey studied medicine at Padua, Italy, under Italian surgeon Fabricius, or Fabrici, 1537-1619, and went on to perform numerous experiments to learn how blood circulates through the body. In his studies, Harvey discarded the accepted method of studying parts of a problem and then filling in the gaps with theory, Instead he aimed to understand the entire circulatory system. Studying the pulse and heartbeat, and performing dissections on cadavers. He accurately concluded that the heart pumps blood through the arteries to all parts of the body and that the blood returns through the veins to the heart. Putting his discovery into writing, Harvey published an anatomical study of the motion of the heart and of the blood in animals in 1628. Another medical development during the 1600s came not at the hands of a physician or surgeon, but rather a naturalist, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, 1632-1723. Van Leeuwenhoek began making his own microscopes and used them to study organisms invisible to the naked eye he had discovered. Microorganisms Leeuwenhoek also observed, but did not name, bacteria. And he accurately described red blood corpuscles, striated muscle fibers, and the lens of the eye. This amateur scientist also disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. The belief that living organisms could be generated by lifeless matter. What were the worst earthquakes of the past century?
In order of magnitude on the Richter scale they were, Chile, 1960, 9.5, Prince William Sound, Alaska. United States, 1964, 9.2, Andrinoff Islands, Alaska, United States, 1957, 9.1, Kamchatka, Northeast Russia. 1952, 9.0, off the coast of northern Sumatra, Indonesia, 2004, 9.0, off the west coast of Ecuador. 1906, 8.8, .8, Rat Islands, Alaska, United States, 1965, 8.7, Assam, India and Tibet. 1950, 8.6, Kamchatka, Northeast Russia, 1923, 8.5, Bandasi, Malay Archipelago, 1938, 8.5, and Kuril Islands. Off the east coast of Asia, extending from Russia in the north to Japan in the south, 1963, 8.5. What is Jonas Salk known for? American physician Jonas Edward Salk, 1914-1995, is familiar to many as the inventor of the polio vaccine. In 1952 more than 21,000 cases of paralytic polio the most. Severe form of polio were reported in the United States. An acute viral infection, poliomyelitis, also called polio or infantile paralysis, invades the central nervous system, it is found worldwide and mainly in children. In 1953, after years of research that included sorting through all the Studies done on immunology since the mid-1800s, Salk announced the formulation of a vaccine which contained all three types of polio known at the time. Salk tested it on himself first, and then on his wife and three children. Experiencing no side effects and finding the vaccine to be effective, it was then tested on 1.8 million school children, in a program sponsored by the March of Dimes. Then called the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. In April 1955 the vaccine was pronounced safe and effective. Salk was duly honored, including with a Congressional Gold Medal and a citation from President Dwight D. Eisenhower. 1890-1969, four years later, American physician Albert B. Sabin, 1906-1993, developed an effective polio vaccine that could be taken orally. Versus via injection, it is the sugar cube so well known to people around the world. That vaccine contains live viruses, SOX was a killed virus vaccine. The two vaccines virtually eradicated polio from developed nations. How do the 2004 Southeast Asia tsunamis rank among natural disasters? The Southeast Asia tsunamis killed more people than any tsunami ever recorded. The series of seismic waves that rushed across the Indian Ocean on December 26, 2004 caused damage of biblical proportions and prompted a humanitarian rescue and aid effort on an unprecedented scale. 
That morning a 9.0 earthquake occurred off the northwestern tip of the island of Sumatra, Indonesia. Witnesses to the tsunamis reported that following the earthquake, ocean waters receded from shorelines hours before the giant waves roared in. Washing over islands and sweeping through coastal villages in 12 countries, including Indonesia, Myanmar, India, and Sri Lanka. The waves struck as far west as the coast of Africa. More than 150,000 people died in the disaster, Indonesia's death toll alone surpassed 85. 000 The international response was immediate and reached into the billions of dollars. Nonetheless relief efforts were hampered by remote island locations. The destruction of infrastructure, and ongoing conflicts in some areas. In the weeks following the tsunamis, officials recognized that the true death toll would take time to be known. Since survivors had yet to be interviewed about relatives and friends who remained missing. It was expected that many had been washed out to sea and thus had not. Been counted in the initial death toll, which was based on body counts. A preliminary report from the World Bank put the damages at $4.5 billion in Indonesia alone. But officials acknowledged that it would take months to calculate damages. The earthquake that struck the morning of December 26, 2004, was the third biggest earthquake in the past 100 years. And the biggest since 1964, when a 9.2 magnitude tembler occurred off Alaska. Scientists believe that the Southeast Asia quake occurred about 6.2 miles beneath the ocean floor and caused a great protrusion in the seabed, generating waves that moved across the ocean in the early morning hours. Though probably not huge when they were out at sea, the waves grew higher as they approached shore. As tremendous volumes of water were forced to the surface. What did the Curies contribute to medicine? In 1898, French chemists, physicists, and husband and wife team Pierre. 1859-1906, and Marie Curie. 1867-1934, discovered radium, the first radioactive element, which proved to be an effective weapon against cancer. They conducted further experiments in radioactivity, a word that Marie Curie coined. Distinguishing among alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Upon Pierre's death in 1906, Marie succeeded him as professor of physics at the Sorbonne. During World War I, 1914-18, Curie organized radiological services for hospitals. From 1918 to 1934 she went on to become director of the research. Department of the Radium Institute of the University of Paris. The Curie's daughter, Irena, 1897-1956, followed in her parents' footsteps, becoming a physicist. And marrying, in 1926, another scientist, Frederick Joliot, 1900-1958, who served as director of the Radium Institute for 10 years beginning in 1946. The pair. Who were known as the Joliot Curies, contributed to the discovery and development of nuclear reactors. 
the Curies and the Joliot Curies were all Nobel laureates. What are the largest known volcanic eruptions in history? Scientists measure volcanic eruptions by the amount of material that a volcano ejects into the atmosphere. Based on this measurement system, the largest eruptions include, in descending order of strength. One at Yellowstone Park in the United States, C600,000 BC, another at Toba, Indonesia. About 74,000 BC, Atambara, Indonesia, eruption in AD 1815, Santorini, Greece, in 1470 BC. Laki, Iceland, in AD 1783, which also produced the largest known lava flow in recorded history. And another in Indonesia, at Krakato, in AD 1883. The eruption in Yellowstone is hard to fathom. The volcano, which would have been located in present-day Wyoming, left a crater that measures 30 by 45 miles and released about 10,000 cubic kilometers of material into the atmosphere. To put this into perspective, consider that the next largest eruption that at Toba, released one tenth that amount, or 1,000 cubic kilometers. The one at Tambora released one tenth of the Toba amount, 100 cubic kilometers. All of the others released about 10 cubic kilometers of earth debris into the atmosphere. The May 18, 1980, eruption of Mount St. Helens in southwestern Washington state is also considered among the largest known eruptions in history and is the largest eruption in the modern history of the 48 contiguous United States. Mount St. Helens released a comparatively small amount of material. One cubic kilometer, but the damage was great after the volcano erupted. Much of the region was blanketed in ash, miles of forest were devastated. And the north fork of the Tootle River was laden with ash and other volcanic debris up to 600 feet deep. The eruption claimed 57 lives. How frequently have tsunamis occurred throughout the world? Tsunamis typically occur about every six years in the Pacific Ocean. And most often during March, August, and November. Although sometimes called tidal waves, tsunamis are created not by tides but by seismic movements. Earthquakes, which produce chains of waves that move across the water at terrific speeds of more than 500 miles per hour. Upon reaching shallow water, the waves grow in height, sometimes to 100 feet or more. As was the case in 1883 when tsunamis reaching up to 130 feet hit an Indonesian island. Destroying more than 150 villages and claiming some 36,000 lives. In ancient times, it is believed that a tsunami destroyed the Minoan Greek culture. That of a people who lived on the island of Crete, in the Mediterranean Sea. In about 1450 BC Crete was struck by a 200-foot tsunami, 
which either demolished the island or weakened the population such that they could be taken over by the Mycenaeans, who were Greek mainlanders. While tsunamis are known to strike along the Pacific Rim, damage has been minimized by sophisticated instruments that help meteorologists monitor and predict disastrous weather. Alerting the public to evacuate from areas of possible danger. Such systems did not exist for the Indian Ocean when a 9.0 earthquake off. The coast of the Indonesian island of Sumatra struck on December 26, 2004. What is the Kyoto Protocol? It is an environmental agreement signed by 141 nations that agree to work to slow global warming by limiting emissions. Cutting them by 5.2% by 2012. Each nation has its own target to meet. The protocol was drawn up December 11, 1997, in the ancient capital of Kyoto, Japan and went into effect on February 16, 2005. The United States is not among the signatories. American officials said the agreement is flawed because large developing countries including India and China were not immediately required to meet specific targets for reduction. Upon the protocol's enactment, Japan's Prime Minister called on non-signatory nations to rethink their participation. Saying that there was a need for a common framework to stop global warming. Environmentalists echoed his call to action. What is the plague? The plague is a general term that refers to any contagious epidemic disease. But usually refers specifically to bubonic plague, which gets its name from the swelling of the lymph nodes, or bubos. A bubonic plague epidemic spread throughout Europe and Asia in the middle of the 14th century. Killing as much as 75% of the population in 20 years, that epidemic came to be known as the Black Death. An acute infectious disease. The bubonic plague is carried to humans by fleas that have bitten infected rats and other rodents. Human symptoms include high fever, chills, swelling of the lymph nodes, and hemorrhages. Once the bacteria spreads to the lungs, it is quickly fatal. This form of the disease is called pneumonic plague and can be transmitted from person to person via droplets. Improved sanitation, chiefly in developed nations, has reduced the occurrence of the disease. Bubonic plague still occurs, but the development of antibiotics in the 20th century has greatly reduced the mortality rate. What is the plague? The plague is a general term that refers to any contagious epidemic disease but usually refers specifically to bubonic plague, which gets its name from the swelling of the lymph nodes, or bubos. 
a bubonic plague epidemic spread throughout Europe and Asia in the middle of the 14th century. Killing as much as 75% of the population in 20 years, that epidemic came to be known as the Black Death. An Acute Infectious Disease The bubonic plague is carried to humans by fleas that have bitten infected rats and other rodents. Human symptoms include high fever, chills, swelling of the lymph nodes, and hemorrhages. Once the bacteria spreads to the lungs, it is quickly fatal. This form of the disease is called pneumonic plague. And can be transmitted from person to person via droplets. Improved sanitation, chiefly in developed nations, has reduced the occurrence of the disease. Bubonic plague still occurs, but the development of antibiotics in the 20th century has greatly reduced the mortality rate. What was the first disease conquered by human beings? Smallpox was the first disease eradicated by medicine. Caused by a virus spread from person to person through the air. Smallpox was one of the most feared diseases and there was no treatment for it. Before the discovery of the New World, smallpox epidemics swept across Africa, Asia, and Europe leaving victims scarred and slash or blind, and killing countless millions. When explorers set out to find new trade routes and landed in North and South America, they brought the disease with them, infecting the indigenous peoples. But once a person had the disease, he or she would not contract it again. This and other observations led British physician Edward Jenner 1749-1823 to develop a successful vaccine against the disease. Prior to the vaccine, the only preventive method was inoculation of the disease itself, which sometimes led to further spread of the disease. For example, in 1777 American General George Washington 1732 to 1799 obtained congressional approval to inoculate the entire continental army against smallpox but the results were mixed After its discovery in 1798 the use of Jenner's vaccine quickly spread the first vaccine given in the United States was in 1799 by a Harvard physician. During the 1800s many countries passed laws requiring vaccination. Improvements in the vaccine resulted in the elimination of smallpox from Europe and North America by the 1940s. When the World Health Organization who was created by the United Nations in 1946. One of its aims was to reduce the instances of smallpox around the world. Immunization programs brought this about. The last natural occurrence of the disease was reported in October 1977 in Somalia, Africa when no further cases were documented within the next two years, the disease was considered eradicated. What was the first disease conquered by human beings?
smallpox was the first disease eradicated by medicine. Caused by a virus spread from person to person through the air. Smallpox was one of the most feared diseases and there was no treatment for it. Before the discovery of the New World, smallpox epidemics swept across Africa, Asia, and Europe, leaving victims scarred and slash or blind, and killing countless millions. When explorers set out to find new trade routes and landed in North and South America, they brought the disease with them, infecting the indigenous peoples. But once a person had the disease, he or she would not contract it again. This and other observations led British physician Edward Jenner. 1749 to 1823, to develop a successful vaccine against the disease. Prior to the vaccine, the only preventive method was inoculation of the disease itself. Which sometimes led to further spread of the disease. For example, in 1777 American General George Washington. 1732 to 1799 obtained congressional approval to inoculate the entire continental army against smallpox but the results were mixed after its discovery in 1798 the use of jenner's vaccine quickly spread the first vaccine given in the united states was in 1799 by a harvard physician during the 1800s many countries passed laws requiring vaccination. Improvements in the vaccine resulted in the elimination of smallpox from Europe and North America by the 1940s. When the World Health Organization, WHO, was created by the United Nations in 1946. One of its aims was to reduce the instances of smallpox around the world. Immunization programs brought this about. The last natural occurrence of the disease was reported in October 1977 in Somalia, Africa. When no further cases were documented within the next two years, the disease was considered eradicated.